Hello, welcome back to Vicki's Country Home. Today I'm doing the second pie for the October pie collaboration between Tammy at Little Jordan Farms, Mrs. Lori at Whippoorwill Holler, and myself. And for every time we do a video, we are tagging other people to make pies because by the end of October, we want to have a whole lot of pies that you can get inspiration from for your holiday baking. So today I decided to do a rustic apple tart and I just picked up a whole bunch of apples from Apple Hill, California on our trip last weekend and I'll put a link to that video up there. This box was overflowing with apples and these are all Mutsus, although I did buy a few Granny Smith and some pears also. But this thing was piled high. And these were seconds because they're not all the same size. And they're not pretty. So for all of these apples, I got these for $20. They had a small box, about square. Probably less than half of this, and it was $21. So this was a really good deal. And Mutsus are probably one of my favorite apples. And I love them because you can cook with them. They hold their texture. They're good to eat. They're kind of a sweet, tart flavor. We just love them. And they're not pretty. They kind of have this scarring look to them but they are so worth it. So every year I try and go and get some more. So I'm gonna use Mutsu apples, and I think they're also known as Crispin. I think that's another name for it. But I'm gonna use these and make my rustic apple tart. The first thing you need to do is get the apples ready, but I don't want them to turn brown. So I have a bowl of cold water with lemon juice in it. And I'm just going to peel and core all of these and cut them into slices for my tart. So just however you do it, if you have a peeler, core, whatever, that works. But I have one. I don't like it. <laughs> so I just go back to the old-fashioned way. It doesn't take me that long. Cut out any bruised areas. You only want the best, and I have plenty of apples, so that's not a problem. And these got a little bit bruised on our trip home but nothing bad, so I want to use those first. So I'm going to finish getting all of these apples cut up and peeled and cored. Now, it calls for about one and a half to two pounds, and this was a little over two pounds, but since I knew there were a couple of bruises, I just, I was okay with that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish getting these all cut up, and then we'll come back to make the pie crust. I've got all of the apples peeled, cored, and cut up, and they're in lemon water so that they will not turn brown while I work. So I'm going to move that out of the way. Now I don't throw away my peels and cores. I keep those and I put them with water and some sugar and I'm making apple cider vinegar out of those so nothing goes to waste. And if I didn't do this it would go to the chickens, maybe the goats, I'm not sure. I haven't checked on that yet. 
Okay, let's make the crust. Now this is a simple crust. It's very rustic. It's very simple. So I have a cup and a half of all-purpose unbleached flour. To that I'm going to add a scant quarter teaspoon of salt and three quarters of a teaspoon of sugar. So let's put that in there and just mix it up well. You want to make sure it's combined really well. Now to this, I am going to add seven and a half tablespoons of butter, which is basically almost one whole stick of butter. Just short of it. Don't know why it's seven and a half. I guess you could do eight. I haven't tried it. This is cold butter. I'm just going to cut it up and put it in here. And now we just want to work that in. And we want to make it look like cornmeal. So I'm going to get it started this way. Now I'm just going to use my fingers. Alright, that looks good to me. I don't worry about it being perfectly uniform. Get that all mixed together. And then you need a quarter cup of ice water. And I have to tell you, I am so excited because I haven't had ice for ice water in three weeks because I didn't have a refrigerator. And I'll have a video about that up there. But we just got this last night. We've run water through the whole system so it's cleared out. And I have ice water again. I have missed drinking that much ice water. Alright, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to stir this in, but I've made a well in the center and I'm just going to kind of pull it in. And I think because it's so dry here, I think I need more ice water. Because it's not all moistened. It's still pretty crumbly. And part of that is just it's so dry in our climate that we normally have to use more water than it says because everything is affected by the dryness. But start with the quarter cup and then only add it if you need to. Almost there. That looks about right. 
You want to mix it till it, it holds together, but you don't want to over mix it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flour my stone. This is actually a piece of stone when we were building our house. I wanted to have a marble section of my counter for baking. And it just, we couldn't come up with a way that it would look nice. So my contractor suggested that they would just get me some slabs of marble and polish them. And they did. So I just put little rubber feet on the back and these work wonderful. I also have a big marble one that I bought. But for just a pie, this is the right size. Now, unlike most pie doughs, we're not going to put this in the refrigerator. So my camera stopped recording because the memory card was full. So what I did is I flattened this out into a disc and rolled it out into about a 15 inch circle. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. So now what I'm going to do is try and transfer this onto my baking sheet so that we can make our tart. And it doesn't matter that it's hanging over the sides right now. That's going to be taken care of. So I'm going to try and center it a little bit better. See, and it doesn't have to be pretty. This, that's the beauty of this tart. And for those of you that are going to comment, that is my range the oven fan that comes on automatically whenever the oven is heating. I can't control it. If you don't care for that, please turn the volume down. That's something I can't do anything about. So I've got about one small apple that I chopped out of those pieces. And there's a seed. We gotta get rid of that. So now what we're going to do is just spread this out on the bottom. And you want to leave about two inches to two and a half around the edges. So get those put down. And then we're going to start laying our apple slices on top of it. You can do it any way you want. You can lay it like this. You can just dump and spread them out however you want to make your tart is fine And we're going to just pile these up. I think that is pretty well piled up. Now what we're going to do is we are going to take some sugar, and you do this to taste, two to three tablespoons, but it's really to taste. These are not as tart as Granny Smith, so you may not need as much, but depending on what apples you're using, you might want to add more.
And although the recipe doesn't call for it, I am going to sprinkle cinnamon. Get the sprinkler back on there. This is optional, but you can also add other seasonings if that's what you like, because this is rustic. Do what sounds good to you. That looks like enough to me. And now we're going to take some more butter. And we're just going to dot that over the top. So we're going to use up that poor little half teaspoon, tablespoon that didn't get used, plus some. All right, that looks good to me. Now here's the fun part. You just bring it up and fold it. You kind of pinch it so it'll stay. And this doesn't want to, so I'm gonna get a little water. Like I said, it's so dry here. Things don't always do what you think because it gets so dry. That's it. Like I said, you don't even have to make it pretty because it's supposed to be rustic, which I love. Let me clean off my hands and then I'm going to put this in a preheated 400 degree oven. Let me check my recipe. About 45 minutes, you want the apples to be tender and you want it to be nice and golden. But you know what? I decided I wanted to do something else. So I'm just going to lightly spray it with water around the edges. And I think I'm going to sprinkle them just lightly with some of the, my sugar. Okay, now this goes in the oven. All right, here it is, my rustic apple tart. And it, it is so good. It has, it puffed up while I was cooking it and it has shrunk down so you'll see kind of a gap here. It looks so good. There it is, with a little bit of vanilla ice cream. The crust is nice and crisp on the bottom. Mmm. I love these apples. They still have a little bit of crunch. Just enough to give you a bite. They're sweet, but they're tart. 
This is so good. Mm. This is a favorite I've made many times. So I hope you give it a try. So now it's my turn to tag some people for this collaboration. So I am going to tag Judy at Our Wandering Footprints. I'm going to tag Jerry at Reap What You Sow. So I hope y'all join in. I hope you enjoy making some pies and some videos for us. If you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe and share, and hit that little notification bell that helps me a lot. God bless and thank you for watching.